Hello everyone and welcome to the 15th episode in the series of things you may have missed in The Witcher 3. It's been 3 months since I last made a video in this playlist, I was a little busier than usual with The Witcher show on Netflix, but I'm finally back to playing the games and we're still in blood and wine. Before we start, however, let me remind you to have a look at the full playlist if you've missed any of the previous episodes and also that this video will be full of enormous spoilers, so be careful. Alright, let's go over another 10 details that you may have missed. Starting off with a rather interesting twist on the quest where you get to speak with Roach. Why are you telling me this? I can read and draw my own conclusions. You can stumble upon that one if you travel to the northeast of Duntine Castle. Normally, after you meet the woman who's being tormented by the spirit, you work together with Roach to solve the quest. However, something you may have missed here is that he can actually complete it alone. Here's how to do it. Simply progress far enough to the point where you get to drink the mixture. If I start muttering something about unicorns or sorceresses, ignore it. And once you start understanding what Roach is saying, just run away from the area. That will initially cause the quest to fail, however if you then go back to the place and talk to the woman again, she'll tell you a story of how Roach actually completed the quest behind the scenes. Witcher. Phantom you told me about, still your tormentor? No, all is well. I thank you for your help so much. But I... I didn't do anything. I was talking to Roach. Your horse helped me. Told me my tormentor was a friend who had passed recently. Failing to find peace in the afterlife, he'd returned as a specter. Roach solved your problem herself? That's right, and quickly. Oh, now she asks that I convey to you her regards. Hmm. Thanks. Take care now. Keep in mind that this will not happen if you move out of the area before drinking the mixture. In that case, the quest will not fail and you can return to finish it whenever you want. Alright, moving on to thing you may have missed number 2. Actually, we're not moving because it's about the same quest. And it's the fact that once you begin to understand Roach, you will also be able to communicate with the other animals in the area. Here's what they say. You've been to Zerikania? Ophia. Oh, have you been there? So, the morning after, is it? You look thirsty. Ooh, thirsty indeed. All due respect. In need of a song, Sir Knight? Or an epic poem, perchance? Ah, boo hoo hoo. What is it, Greyhead? Clever man, is that it? Buck off. Leave me alone, darn it. Greetings. Ah, oh, Skesme. Greetings. Lepio to keep you. From Hag Ophus, too. A couple of additional facts here are that this one, for example, has the same lines as that obsessive fan you get, uh, you know, the one in the tourney grounds, of whom I talked about in the previous episode. Greetings. Lepio to keep you. From Hag Ophus, too. And also that the animals are actually immortal you are unable to kill them both during and outside of the quest. Okay, for number three, we find ourselves right about here in this abandoned amphitheater. It's more or less on the opposite side of the lake from the Nilfgaardian embassy. Here you'll stumble upon a quest called But other than that, how did you enjoy the play? There are a couple of interesting bits you may have missed here. The first one is the general story behind the quest that is revealed in the notes you find, which is that the dead woman you stumble upon, who by the way seems to have an unhealthy obsession with men, wanted to reenact the role of a legendary actress who actually died playing that role on this same stage. Then later on we realize that the legendary actress, who apparently lived about a hundred years ago, was actually murdered by one of her fellow actresses who was jealous of her and who was also an elf. What's more, it's implied that the one who died cursed the whole place upon her death. And in fact, while we do the quest and fight her wraith, 
you can see that there's an entire ghostly audience watching the battle. Right, moving on to number 4 and the quest for the Witch of Link's Crack. There are 5 or 6 different ways you can play this quest, with 3 major outcomes and 2 or 3 unique details, so let me go through each of them quickly and chances are you've missed a thing or two. Starting with the worst outcome, which happens if you force the Witch to fight you. This way she'll release Daphne's spirit, but will not pacify it. The spirit will then possess the dog and through it kill Jacob. Upon realizing that, you'll be forced to kill the dog as well. A rather grim turn of events, however, I do like the little speech Geralt gives in the end. Damn it. Which freed the ghost from the tree, as promised. Failed to add the specter to be insane, full of pain and rage. Possessed the first living creature it ran into. The dog. Dog then killed Jacob. Farewell, chivalrous woodsman. Sorry it ended this way. Life's rarely like a fairy tale. Still, folk have got to have faith, believe in something. Then you have the middle outcome, I suppose, where you tell the witch that you'll handle things yourself after taking the kerchief. This results in you freeing the spirit, but once again failing to pacify it. However, this time it does not possess anything and Jacob lives, along with his dog. However, you part on bad terms and without payment. Fucking fairy flaps! What the demon happened there? My fault. Went about lifting the curse the wrong way. More like tore than freed her from her prison. Shock was too much. Released all the rage and pain that was in her. Blimey, man. I suppose that's what I get for hiring a bungler. At least the lady's pain is done. She'll suffer no more in the tree. Now take your coin and go. Finally, the third and best outcome, in which you manage to free and pacify Daphne's spirit, can actually be obtained in several ways. To do so, you need Garrett's remains in addition to the kerchief. You can either find those yourself, or with the witch's help, after humbling yourself before her and giving her a lock of your hair. One thing you could have missed here is that if you find Garrett's bones before ever talking to the witch, and then in addition to that you humble yourself, there's a small unique line when she realizes that you already have the bones. His bones lie bleaching in the cave beneath this rock. Got a bone of his already. That was taken as a professional precaution. Good. Another thing you could have missed is that in order to unlock the humbling dialogue option, you first have to read the book Jacob gives you. Without doing so, the dialogue choice will not be there at all. And the third and final thing that I think you could have missed is that it is actually possible to find the bones, tell the witch that you'll lift the curse yourself and still fail to get the best outcome. This happens if you never choose this dialogue option. The Lady's Knight, you ever make it here? Sagarath, yes, he came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. To be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. Because then Geralt doesn't know whose bones he's found down there and therefore doesn't think to use them in lifting the curse. Skeleton, bits of some old armor. Wonder who it was. Finally, I do always prefer telling Daphne the truth. Gareth broke his vow, failed to stay faithful. Man is built of mud and filth, milady, and is like to blunder we all are. How cruel is the world to render conferring one's love so hard? Alright, time for number 5. This one is located right next to the talking animals from the beginning of the video. Once you enter this area here, called the Olive Grove, Geralt will sense that something's not right. Something's not right. And upon further exploring, you will find this hooded woman, who's just chilling in front of a small building. The thing you may have missed about her is that she practiced my favorite type of magic. Inside the building there is a dead body of a man whose diary reveals the story of what happened. It turns out his wife was cheating on him, meeting her lover here in this place, and what's more, the woman had been growing anemic and pale, losing her vitality, wandering aimlessly at night and so on. Which all leads me to believe that her lover was a vampire. So this Bruxa must have been his wife's lover, and also the one who killed him 
when he came trying to remove her from their lives in exchange for money. Now, this is confirmed by killing the Broxa, because from her you loot a letter written by the wife, where she talks about how full of passion she is for the Broxa, whose name is Zimena? Zimena? Jimena? I have no idea how to pronounce it. However, a couple of things don't fit very well here. First off, he mentions a sack full of Nilfgaardian Florence in the journal. But on his corpse, we barely find any Florence. I guess the Bruxa may have taken it, but then it's not on her corpse either? So did the wife steal it? I don't know. And the second thing is that the man refers to the lover as a he. Now, normally that will not surprise me since the vast majority of the time it's men who romance women in this world. Even the wife herself claims that she was surprised by how she fell for a woman. However, it is implied that he saw them. I guess it is possible that he simply observed from afar as his wife entered the grove and saw the birds a bit later, without actually seeing them meet, only assuming that that was the case. Anyway, I thought it's curious, so I included it here. My favorite type of magic, lesbomancy. All right, moving on to number, uh, where are we at? Six. I have a small Game of Thrones easter egg here that you may have missed. Located right around this area, there is a girl who says the following. My brother gave me a sword. I named it Nidan. Is it true? Is winter coming? Do you know how to swing a sword left-handed? I do. And I say, hey, 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 what's going on? Hi. Off you go. Get. Shoo. Shoo. And speaking of Game of Thrones, I stopped watching that show early on, but uh, I suppose Stillwaters may be a soft reference to Brienne as well? My congratulations. Thanks. Have you naught to add? I'm a woman. No wry remarks. What for? It's the 13th century. Nothing peculiar about it. Women own taverns, run farms, and fight. Will you not claim there was no honor in fighting a wench? No. I'd expect to hear that from someone who was afraid to lose to a woman. Now! Okay, for number seven, we have none other than Winnie the Pooh. Located right about here, you could have missed a large bear walking around in red top. When killed, in addition to the normal bear loot, he also drops a jar of honey. Now, other than that, I also wanted to include here several popular children's songs that have references in Blood and Wine. I did have short individual videos of them on my channel, however, I ended up deleting them a couple of months ago. It was when YouTube started scaring us big time if we make content that's specifically targeted towards children under the age of 13. So yeah, sadly, I lost that footage. But I'll mention what I remember and perhaps some of you have heard them while exploring or have watched some of my short videos about them. So I recall there was a drunk woman who sings Now bring us some figgy pudding and bring it right here. There was also a small child running around singing Old MacDonald had a farm, except instead of MacDonald she says a French sounding name. I believe there was also a boy who sings a variant of Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed, but I think it wasn't about monkeys but some other animal. I'm not sure. You'll have to forgive me. Alright, next up is number 8, probably the shortest one in this video, and it's a hidden painting of the developers atop the highest mountain in Tucson. Here's a short video of me reaching it with a mod that allows you to unlock your camera and travel all the way there. Also, some people say that it's doable with NVIDIA's Ansel, which I have, but for some reason I cannot move my camera around. I can only rotate it and zoom in and out. Now, before we get to the next one, I want to take a moment, if you don't mind, and ask you to give this video a like if you've enjoyed it so far, and perhaps to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so. Also, I'd like to thank those of you who chose to support me by becoming members of my YouTube channel, or through Patreon.
Alright, enough lollygagging, let's move on. And speaking of my subscribers, the last two details of this video are brought to you by them. Number 9 comes from one called Livy Woodward. So he told me about something rather awesome. And that's the fact that if you choose to start a new game plus from a save that's in the middle of the fairy tale land while you have the unicorn mount, Roach will actually be a unicorn in New Game Plus. Now, I haven't tested that past White Orchard yet, but so far it seems to be working. Um, if anyone knows anything more about it, I'm all ears. And the final tenth detail is once again brought to you by a viewer by the name of Zane, who pointed out that in Beauclair's infirmary, located right about here, we can find several drawings from the Voynich manuscript or Voynich Manuscript, not sure how it's pronounced. Anyway, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's a rather mysterious sort of botanical or medical journal or something. And the reason why it's mysterious and hard to define is because it's supposedly encrypted. And so far, nobody has managed to decrypt the writings. And I'm saying supposedly because there is a chance that the text is simply gibberish, made to look like an encrypted writing, but nevertheless, it's quite interesting. In addition, I could add that in the infirmary you can also find a man whose legs have been cut off, as well as some anatomy and embryology related pictures, which lead us to believe that the world of the Witcher is indeed a bit more advanced than our own Middle Ages. Half the Dutch's populace acknowledge only one remedy, wine. And with that, I think we're done. Tell me what you thought of everything I talked about. Was there anything you missed? Is there anything else you'd like me to talk about when it comes to blood and wine? Although keep in mind that I've already made three videos about it and I do have plans for at least one more. But nevertheless, share your thoughts about, well, anything. Alright, thank you very much for watching, thank you for your support and until the next video, stay tuned and be good.